carrying on looking at the drums, um, then forgot to get through this. And at the end of the last video, we had uh, this four bar pattern, so the main drum elements that go right the way through the song. So, yeah, you should check out four bars of drums, then the sound like this. Um, so in this video, really, we're going to have a look at copying these drums into to fill out the texture for the rest of the track and where you're going to need to edit them to fit. Okay. First off, if we have a look at the next four bars, so <clears throat> bar nine, uh, nine to bar 13, here we've got basically three bars of the pattern uh, and then a one bar fill that takes us into the verse. So what you can do here is just copy your three bars that you've got uh, at bar one, copy that into bar nine, and then let's take a look at bar 12, which is this uh, drum fill. So here, this is an example of where we're not using eighth notes or sixteenth notes, we're actually using twelfth notes or triplets. I'll show you what I mean. If we have a look at the kick, Um, so in each beat of this bar, we're fitting three notes. Okay, so four beats in a bar, three notes to every beat, gives you 12 notes in the bar. Um, so we've just got three beats here then of these triplets or these 12th notes. Easiest way to get these in, well obviously playing them in real time is preferable, but um, what I did here was just to click them in with the input tool. So over here where it says in I'm going to switch this on and down here this is the uh, bar division in Logic so I'm going to set this to 12th notes and get my playhead whoops, over to the beginning of the bar and uh, let's get my caps lock keyboard. So MIDI in switched on division set to 12th notes and then I'm just going to play that kick drum sound 12 times. Well, sorry, nine times. I'm going to leave this beat empty. Um, so there are my 12th notes. What we also want to do is to get a crescendo or some velocity um, variation on here. So the way we're going to do that is to open up what's called the hyperdraw lane. Make sure here that velocity is selected, which it is. And then I'm just going to click toward the bottom of the range and draw this line up to the top. Um, this can be a little bit fiddly sometimes getting the line started so just click, hold the mouse down for a second then let go and that should start your line. So now we've got a nice velocity ramp. Let's make even more of that. right up to the top. Cool. Also then in this bar, oops, we have just our layered up snare drum on the fourth beat. And same thing, 12th note hi-hats, just um, the same as the kick drum but without the velocity ramp. That's how I heard it anyway. Cool. Now also you'll notice down here I've got my first crash symbol. So there's a few of these dotted around the song <clears throat> and they, they happen basically at the beginning of sections. So we've got a crash symbol here, one at the beginning of the verse, beginning of the bridge, beginning of this section. So you can see they kind of follow this pattern of just having a crash symbol at the beginning of different sections.
We've also, you can see, we've got this reverse symbol. So briefly, just going to look at this and how you can get a nice reverse symbol sound. Again, we're using Ultra Beat. So this is a, um, a different, you know, a separate Ultra Beat channel. Just using this for symbols, and I can't even remember which kit I started out with. Sounds like it was an acoustic sort of a kit. But what I've done here is to, as we looked at before, I've loaded in a crash sample. Um, so remember, click load sample and then audition um, sounds till you find one you like. So I found this crash symbol that I like the sound of. What I've done to get the reverse symbol is control and click or right click on this uh, slot and then copy voice and sequence and then in the slot below again control click and paste voice okay, and this basically gives us a duplicate so we've got the same sound here on two different keys then with my copy come down here um, to where the sample is and you can see this small red arrow here clicking that reverses your symbol So there we go, there's my reverse symbol. And again, there's a few of these. The reverse symbol isn't used every time, but there's a few dotted around, so like for the bridge. Again, listen out, find places where these, uh, these things are happening. Cool, so there's our uh, next lot of four bars, 9 to 13, including that drum fill using those triplets, those 12th notes. All right, moving on into the next section then. Um, and it's always a good idea to work section by section. So looking at this bit of the verse, these eight bars here, let's just play the whole lot. Okay, um, these drums all the way through these eight bars, 13 to 21. This is basically a copy of the patterns that you put together at bar five to nine. Um, so you can go ahead and copy bar five to nine into bar 13 and then again into bar 71. When you get to verse B over here, the drum pattern is ever so slightly different. So if you listen to bar 13, and then bar 21. Um, hopefully you've spotted that there's one extra kick drum in the first bar here. It's this one here. Um, apart from that, the pattern is identical, I think, and the snare and the hi-hat patterns are the same as well. So you can just copy the snare and hats directly. Kick drum then needs a little bit of editing just getting in this extra note here. And the way that I did that I think was just to copy, hold down Alt, copy that note back to, oh sorry our division is still set to 12s. Um, good point, make sure you put that back to 16 uh, when you're done with it. Mm. Okay. There we go. And the same thing here. So, as I say, work by sections and just listen through to the drums. In fact, a good thing to do is if we just solo the original track for seconds. Something that I find useful is to actually just look at my notes while I'm listening to the, the track so that I can compare um, what my drums are doing with what. Okay, so this, I've missed one there. And then normally in a section where you've got a pattern like this, it's going to repeat again within that section. Um, so this should be the same. 
Cool. And then in the last bar of this section, this brings us on to the other major um, bit of editing or thing to kind of keep in mind is that um, like we had that drum fill just before the verse, at the, often at the end of a section you will have either a fill or um, a, a drop bar where different parts of the drums drop out. So that's what we've got here in bar 28. So all you've got to do there is delete or mute the notes that you've got in that bar. Got some snare drums there, which I don't want. And I've got some hi hats in bar 28, which don't exist on the original recording. So, after you've made your copies, you know, do go through, particularly check the ends of sections, so like the last bar of each section, just to make sure that, you know, if you need to mute anything, by the way, by pressing M. Muting's a good idea because it doesn't get rid of things completely, but obviously it just silences. There we go. Cool, so again, next section in the bridge, made another copy of all of those elements. So here this is essentially the same as what we've had in the verse, with that extra kick drum note in, snare and hi-hats are the same, until, again, the last bar of the section. So we've got again this sort of <coughs> drop bar with things like the snare drum dropping out. So I've muted the snares in those uh, in that bar 36. And bar 36 just plays on the beat, so let's mute those. Kick drum playing on the beat in this bar, and again you can see there's a velocity ramp here, like we looked at before. So the kick drum gets quieter through this bar. Okay, so you can sort of hopefully see the pattern now. So the next eight bars are a copy again of the previous eight bars. And again, in the last bar of this section, we've got a little variation. Boom, chat, boom, boom. So the kick drum ends halfway through the bar. Snares and meters. Oh, not that one. And the hi hats are muted. So you can kind of see the way that this is working. Um, and there, you know, so it's a continual process of copying the basic patterns and then just listening and thinking about what's different. And it's just uh, the odd occasional extra note, like in the kick drum, or um, these little fills and variations at the ends of sections. When we get the, this part of the song here, See, I've copied and then muted the hi-hats by pressing M. Okay, so this section, then again, direct copy of this section. Let's just see what's going on in the last bar there. Nope, see there's no fill there. Is there one here? Yeah, again, so that's the same fill that we've had previously at the end of this section. And then all the drums stop uh, at 85. Apart from one kick drum at bar 85. So just make sure you get that last one in there.
and then that's it. <laughs>